4468 or Malad is considered a jewel in the collection's crown. It's very hard to walk in that great hall and not be drawn in by the bright garter blue paintwork or the unusual streamlined shape of the boiler. You can't really talk about Malad without going back in time to 1922 when its predecessor, the A1 Pacific, was created. The first one to roll off the line was an engine called Great Northern. A Great Northern was created by Sir Nigel Gresley and he was known to use a very unusual configuration to his engines and this carried right through his builds, right to the A4. And it had to do with the cylinders. His rule? Each engine must have three cylinders. The three cylinders must drive onto the same axle, but that must not be the leading coupled axle. Advancements to more economical workings, such as the higher boiler pressure and a much larger superheater, led to the A1 being converted into the much more economical A3, all modifications completed in 1931. However, Gresley still wasn't satisfied. The railway companies were competing for that elusive title of fastest express. Gresley man ran many speed tests in the year of 1934-35, most notably using the LNER modified A1 Pacific number 4472, which is now known as the Flying Scotsman. From these tests and also from the pressure of many of the other railway companies wanting a fast economical service, Gresley had the opportunity to modify the A3 in several key areas, thus increasing its speed. And so, the A4 was born. Inspired by the new performance cars produced by Bugatti, Gresley decided to streamline this engine. He paid special attention to the internal streamlining a new bass pipe was created, and he created the boi he increased the boiler pressure to 250 pounds per square inch. This meant that with a full regulator, the check steam press chest pressure was almost equal to the boiler pressure, which made for a highly efficient vehicle. Of course, many of the changes were seen outside the engine, giving the engine a very unique shape which is still recognisable to this day. One of the strangest modifications was made to the A4, was accidental. The boiler casing behind the funnel was initially flat, however, during wind tunnel tests on the models, someone had made an accidental indentation on the plasticine just behind the chimney. This had a fantastic effect as it lifted the smoke, which meant that smoke deflectors were, were, ne were never needed, unlike on many of the A4's cousins and sisters. The engine itself was an initial and roaring success. Over a hundred A4s were created. The first one to roll off the line was Silver Link. Sadly, Silver Link is no longer around. However, its nameplate is still within the, within the museum, just meters away from the nameplate of the last A4 to roll off the line, Silver Fox. On the 3rd of March 1938, the 28th engine to roll out of Doncaster Works was given the unassuming number 4468. She was called Mallard. She was slightly different from her sisters as she had a new type of double chimney. After several tests in Doncaster and a lot of secret planning, Mallard was chosen to be the locomotive to pull the train called the Coronation Run. This normally comprised of eight coaches, however Gren Gresley wanted to push the limits. So he reduced the number of coaches to six and added the famous dynamometer car, totaling a train weight of 238 tonnes. The Sunday, the 3rd of July 1938, the run they were planning to do on that day was extended to Grantham and Barkston. The track was flat and fairly straight, so it provided the best shot of reaching top speed. About 4 pm, Mallard's driver Joe Doddington opened that regulator. But I think it's best if Joe explains what happened next. The only blue streamlined engine Mallard we drew away from Grantham. I accelerated up the bank to Stoke Summit and passed Stoke Box at 85. Once over the top, I gave Mallard her head and she just jumped through it like a lifeline. Then, 108, 109, 110. Go on, old girl, I thought, we can do better than this. So I nursed her and shot through a little bathroom at 123. And in the next one and a quarter mile, the needle crept up further. 123 and a half, 124. 
125. I'm going for a quarter of a mile while they tell me the folks in this car held their breath. 126 miles per hour. 126. That was the fastest speed a steel locomotive had ever been driven in the world. Towards the end, a faint scent of aniseed wafted through the cab. This could only mean one thing, that the stink bomb she was fitted with had burst and Joe was forced to slow down. However, the run was an earth-shattering 126 miles an hour. Had a big end not gone, Joe could have sworn he could have got her to 130. Through sheer will and determination, Mallard had secured her place in history as the fastest steam traction locomotive in the world. This record has never been surpassed, and she was rewarded with a specialist plate on the side of her boiler to commemorate this massive achievement. Mallard went on to work in regular service throughout the 40s, 50s and 60s. By 1962, steam was getting phased out. Many of her sisters had already been scrapped, but due to her achievement, she was no contest for preservation. Mallard's working life came to an end on the 25th of April 1963. She went through a small cosmetic restoration at Doncaster Works. However, the people were still in love with the beautiful machine. So it was decided in 1986 to check her over to see what needed to be done to put her back into steam. Turns out it didn't need a lot. However, it was decided a limited boiler ticket of 26 runs would be given to her. Tragically, on the last run, she had to stop due to a blow-up on the Cecil to Carlisle line. And while this was an easy fix, it was decided that after clocking up over one and a half million miles, she deserved a well-earned rest, and had resided in the National Collection ever since. Even though Mallard is now considered a static display, and it's very unlikely she will run again, she is occasionally taken out on the line pushed by diesels. Most recently, she was taken out of the museum to launch the new Azuma range at York Station. She's also been taken to Silsden, where, which also houses the National Railway Museum's sister collection called Locomotion. But most of the time, Mallard can be seen in the Great Hall wearing her original blue garter LNER paintwork and original livery. Today, out of over a hundred models built, only six A4s remain. Those being Mallard, Union of South Africa, Dwight D. Eisenhower, Dominican of Canada, Bitten, and Sir Nigel Gresley, with two out of the six currently in steam. As of today, 20, September 2020, you can see three of the A4s at the National Railway Museum. Mallard, of course, is a permanent fixture. However, Sir Nigel Gresley is currently in the works, having a 10 yearly overhaul and the renewal of a boiler ticket. And if you come in by train from the Northern Line, you may also see Union of South Africa on the work siding. She's be she has been recently withdrawn from service and has come to the museum to prepare her for preservation. Unfortunately, Union of South Africa cannot be accessed or seen from inside the museum. I really hope that you enjoy this presentation and if you have any questions about Mallard, please don't hesitate to put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them the best I can. Thank you very much.